Italy's political crisis deepens. The Prime Minister resigns, saying the Interior Minister brought down the government to further his own interests. What's behind Matteo Salvini's power play? And will the gamble pay off? This is Inside Story. Hello and welcome to the program. I am Hashim Ahlbarra. August is normally a quiet month for Italians, a chance to enjoy the summer holidays. But politicians have been forced back to work to contain a crisis. Prime Minister has resigned, accusing the Interior Minister Matteo Salvini of sinking the coalition government for personal and political gain. Salvini and his far-right league party's popularity is on the rise. For being tough on immigration, he wants to force a snap election. But it's not as straightforward as that, as Sonia Gallego explains from Rome. As leader of the government, Giuseppe Conte had overseen one of the most challenging coalitions in recent times. Battling one political crisis after another, Conte aimed at being a stabilizing force between two vastly different political parties, the far-right League and the anti-establishment Five Star Movement. It proved to be an impossible task, and Conte said he would be offering his resignation, but there was no question over who he thought was responsible. Let me say that Interior Minister Salvini has shown that he is following his own interests and those of his party. In a blistering attack against Salvini, Conte accused him of unleashing further turmoil and in doing so, endangering Italy's already stagnant economy. But the League party leader was unrepentant. I would do again everything I did, everything, with the great strength of being a free man. Therefore, it means I'm not afraid of the judgment of the Italians. Overshadowing this impasse has been Matteo Salvini's own political agenda. Vocally anti-migrant, he's also waged war on the NGOs that have attempted to rescue asylum seekers crossing the Mediterranean. And it's a tactic that has had success. Support for his views have increased across the country, turning his party into a force that cannot be ignored. In the middle of this political drama, this Spanish rescue vessel hovering off the coast of Lampedusa with dozens of vulnerable people on board. For more than two weeks, they had not been given permission to disembark. The open arms vessels repeatedly requested permission to dock despite continued rejection. Some on board became so frantic, they risked their own lives by jumping into the sea, attempting to swim to land. They were rescued by nearby Italian Coast Guard vessels. On Tuesday, a local prosecutor visited the vessel and issued an emergency measure allowing it to dock in Lampedusa. But this is one incident among many others. Despite tough new laws preventing such landings, they still arrive. Desperate for safety in Europe, no matter the cost of reaching there. Sonia Gallego, Al Jazeera, Rome. Let's bring in our guests all from Rome. Alberto Castelvecchi is an Italian publisher and journalist. And Emiliana Di Blasio is a professor of political science at the Luis Guido Carli University. Welcome to the program. Alberto, now that Prime Minister Giuseppe Conti has resigned, opening the country to a multitude of options. What do you think is the more likely scenario for the country? Well, everything is in the hands of the uh, uh, President of the Italian Republic, Sergio Mattarella, who is a very wise man. The question everybody has is not if we will go to elections, but mm -hmm. how and when we will go to elections. So the prospect of a snap election seems to be um, phasing away, and probably we will go to elections in a few months with uh, somehow a direction by the presence of the Italian Republic. Emiliana, are we heading towards a political impasse in Italy, or do you st still see the possibility, for example, of a caretaker government? Uh, yes, we are. <laughs> it's a political impasse. There is a possibility for a government. It depends, obviously, from the many streams inside the PD, the Democratic Party, but also from the volunteer of the Five Star Movements, because actually it seems that we have a couple of possibilities right there on the path. 
The first one is, okay, we can have a national coalition composed by the Five Star Movements and Democratic Party. While the second one could be a government led by Five Star Movements and supported by Democratic Party and the extreme left. So all these are possibilities. So at the very so, centre of this whole saga now is El Capitano, as his supporters call him, uh, Matteo uh, Salvini. Alberto, why do you think Matteo is moving towards this direction? Well, Il Capitano, the captain, as you recalled, is a very strong figure. He's the typical strongman that the right movement would like to see in power. There are some reasons why. First of all, we have to take into account that in the real country, the real masses of Italians, which are now following Salvini, want him to be forming a new government. We have had some uh, rounds of local elections in Italy, where the Lega, which is Salvini's uh, party, climbed up to some 40%, 38 to 40% of political consensus, while the Five Stars movement, who used to be Salvini's partner in the government, went down dramatically from 32 to 17%. So the reason why Salvini wants to go for snap elections is because he wants to cash in, he wants to capitalize somehow from this extreme strong wave of political consensus he's got in the country. Mm -hmm. Emiliana, I mean, if you remember when the, this whole coalition came together, it was amidst a feeling that the league, along with the Five Star Movement, would bring about a genuine radical change of the country. Suddenly you have the captain, uh, Salvini now, ditching his partner. Isn't this something which could widely be seen in the political establishment as an act of political betrayal? Uh, it's the first time ever that happened a crisis like that, by the way. Uh, even if we did know from the very beginning that the coalition was very challenging, because the two souls of the coalition, the Five Star Movement and the League, the former North League, led by uh, Matteo Salvini, are extremely different. I mean, uh, the North League, the, the former North League, the actual League, is a sovereignist movement more linked to the uh, industry in the North, while the Five Star Movement was, um, I mean, was a movement at the beginning from the people movement started from the very bottom up. Mm. So th these are very two different political parties that started this coalition. And also uh, facing the European Union intention, they had a completely different intention. Okay. So we had the sentiment that actually was a very strange and, and challenging coalition. And obviously, as Alberto stated before, uh, the personality of Matteo Salvini uh, rised up. Even if I want to add something, just to quote, yes, he wants to optimize uh, his political consens consensus among Italy and especially after the European ele election. But also he wants to escape from the financial stable law um, because we do know that Italy needs 23 billions, I mean, according to the European Union agreements. And so now Italy don't, doesn't have 23 mm -hmm. uh, billions, and they don't want to, I mean, to, uh, to recover to any measure. We, we, will, uh, we will talk more in detail that. about that particular anger. Alberto, is it fair to say that Five Star Movement is the biggest loser in this political move by Salvini? Well, to, to, to say if they will be the losers, we'll have to wait and see what will happen in the next two weeks, because it's been losing consensus in the country. As I was mentioning, they lost from 32 down to a miserable 17, and in some cases, 12 percent in local elections. Mm -hmm. But at the moment, they still have a strong majority in the national parliament. So if Sergio Mattarella, who is the president of the Italian Republic, decides not to go for elections in, the, in Italy, in the nation, they will straight, still uh, preserve their majority in the parliament, and they will be able to form a new uh, coalition government mm -hmm. with the Democratic Party. So they're not exactly losers, but they know that they have to do something in order not to be pushed out of the parliament in order to get back to the parliament, which is a much smaller, much smaller portion mm -hmm. 
of the Italian uh, consensus. Em Emiliana, you, you spoke earlier about one of the possibilities, which is uh, Luigi Di Maio, along with Matteo Renzi, who is the uh, leader of the center-left Democratic Party coming uh, together. Is this alliance an option? What, what do they have in common then? I mean, it is an option, by the way, even if we have to precise that the secretary of the Democratic Party nowadays is not Matteo Renzi, but mm -hmm. uh, Zingaretti. Mm -hmm. and, but the majority in, of the deputy of the Democratic Party are led by Matteo Renzi. Mm -hmm. So I think that an alliance is possible because the two parties don't want to go to the, to the political election as I mean, Alberto was stating before. I mean, they're losing consensus around the country, so they don't want to go to the election nowadays. They need. Alberto, to, do you see continue. this possibility? The two big egos, Di Maio and Matteo Renzi, coming together, despite the fact that just a few days ago, the possibility for them coming together was almost impossible. Well, you know, Italy is at its roots a Catholic country, so maybe they could get together if they're able to forgive each other. You know, the sense of forgiving is at the center of Italian culture. But in terms of possibility that they come together, many political observers said that if you put Matteo Renzi, which was uh, uh, prime minister three governments ago, together with uh, um, Luigi Di Maio, it could be like putting water together with oil. So it's quite uncommon to see them together. But it's the whole of the Democratic Party, which, as Emiliano was mentioning, is not only Matteo Renzi, but many, many other barons, many other colonels, as we call them. So there is a possibility of a new coalition, Democratic Party, plus fastest moving. What definitely looks impossible at the moment is that they get back to the table, the Lega, it mean, I mean Salvini mm -hmm. and Di Maio. I think that there is a, a fracture and there is the, 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 the separation is definitive and it's, it's impossible that they get back to the table. Emiliana, why would be such anxiety uh, within the political establishment in Italy when all political commentators have been saying this year that the only thing in common between the Five Star Movement and the League is themselves being anti-establishment. But apart from that, they have nothing in, the, in common. And the potential for them to depart their ways is very strong. There is a big anxiety because probably we didn't expect a crisis in the middle of the vacation this, this year. But, uh, yes, they have nothing in common. They didn't, have, they didn't have in common also the vision of the European Union. They don't have in common the vision of the economic procedures. They don't even have in common uh, the vision of the measures of the growth of Italy. So Italy was stuck. So I can understand the crisis and I can understand this divorce that is getting public yesterday uh, with, I mean, with the... Um, with the affirmation of the prime minister, of the legal prime minister, which is Conte. So Conte officially divorced with, divorced with Matteo Salvini. The anxiety is related to the fact that we are not sure that the government is possible, even, even if Sergio Mattarella, I'm sure the president of the Republic, wants to carry on this legislature. Because it would be a disaster for Italy to go to election immediately. I mean, we assisted to a continue a campaign for more than a year, mm -hmm. led by Matteo Salvini. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't think that we could stay stuck on the political communication. Mm -hmm. We need to do something. I mean, we, we need to, to find an agreement with the European Union. We're out of the radar of the European Union now. And we also need to find a way to rebuild our political agenda. So if, you, if, if the Italians are looking forward to rebuild their political life, and this is going to be my question to Alberto, why is suddenly Salvini becoming uh, somehow a saviour for many Italians? Is it because people are fed up with decades of centre-right, centre-left government? bureaucracy, dysfunctional political establishment. Is he presenting an alternative for the Italians? Well, there is mainly two reasons why Salvini is so strong at the moment. The first reason is that uh, the centre-left governments minimised the momentum of the uh, cultural um, 
the cultural problem there is with immigration in Italy. In many, many suburbia, in many, many uh, urban areas, uh, immigration is causing some problems of integration, of dialogue, of difference in cultures, even of microcriminality, which is uh, rising up. And the center-left governments always minimize this without taking measures. So even if Salvini has got no clear idea of how to solve the problem, the simple fact that he's very vocal against immigration made him extremely popular. The second reason is that, traditionally speaking, the uh, entrepreneurs and the companies and the strong economic powers, which have always been backing Salvini uh, from the north, now claim to be better represented. So somehow they asked him to pull the plug to the government to go for snap elections in order to ensure that the productive north of Italy, that is Veneto, that is Lombard, that is Liguria, which are full of entrepreneurs who are back in Salvini, can get a better voice and can be better heard in the Italian government. So one reason mm -hmm. is economical, the other one is cultural. Okay, Emiliana, I mean, being vocal, strong, aggressive in pursuing a political agenda is something people would understand. But ultimately, I think Italians do understand that you need someone who is a pragmatist to be able to solve the country's political and economic problems. And this is a country that needs to put itself within the framework of the EU to move forward. Why would Italians believe suddenly that with Salvini, someone who would like to distance Italy from Europe could be a savior of the nation? Okay. Uh, yes, I mean, Italians were always fascinated by the strong leader, by a person that could solve everything. I mean, we had an example a few years ago with Matteo Renzi. I mean, he reached the 40% of the uh, European election. And uh, now we are seeing, seeing pretty much the same thing with Matteo Salvini, even if the communication of Matteo Salvini is pretty much different. And so obviously also the political issues are pretty much different. But, uh, so even if we are fascinating, then we have to see, I mean, apparently what we, he, he will do. Obviously, he still have a consensus. I mean, even if the consensus is pretty much different from the percentually of political election and the majority on the parliament. So he still have the consensus. We don't know how um, he's going to put together, I mean, the, the need of the Italy to grow. I mean, not only, I mean, economically, Italy needs to grow also socially. I mean, we also have big differences inside Italy. Mm -hmm. For example, we have a Northeast that is at the maximum level of the European Union, while the South is completely separated from the mm -hmm. standard of Europe. So we still have this problem, but this, those problems, I mean, uh, <laughs> come from very far away. And I don't think that Salvini is going to sort it out from them. Even if obviously is surfing a very important issue. I mean, in the perception, in the perception of the Italians, is surfing a very important mm -hmm. issue, like for example, migration, which is important in all Europe, oh. but obviously is producing different answers all over okay. Europe. Alberto, I mean. It's quite obvious that Salvini saw that his party doubled its seats in the European Parliament and said, you know what, we could also do it with the political landscape in Italy and then if we go to any snap election, we will be able easily to double our seats. Here is the question then. If he can win the election and manages to form a governing coalition, when it comes to the EU austerity rules that he says he is opposed to and the Italy's debt, what, what, what is he... What is he offering here to, 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 to fix these two issues? Well, uh, Salvini's economic ideas, uh, on the contrary of what the Five Stars movement thinks, are for expansion, growth of uh, national products, and uh, uh, measures which should encourage productivity in the companies, in the enterprises. But this could be done, according to Salvini's advisors, even without solving the problem at the moment of the Italian public debt, which is, we'll recall, we'll have to remember that, doubled in Germany. Germany travels around 60% of relationship between the public debt and the uh, gross national product. 
France is around 100, and we are 130, which is double than Germany. Salvini says this is not a problem. We have to expand economy to expand the GNP, and we will succeed. One other thing that Salvini is supposed to be doing very soon, if we want to reassure mm -hmm. his uh, um, international partners, France, Germany, and most of all the United States, is to abandon or to silence his uh, agreement with Vladimir Putin. The Russia gate we had in Italy is not so strong as the one, affect, as the one affecting Mr. Trump, but it's quite strong. I mean, Salvini took positions for Mr. Putin, and this is not really orthodox in a country like mm -hmm. Italy, which has strong NATO, NATO uh, traditions. Because so if Salvini is, is able to make people forget this Russia alignment and getting back to the that, drawing board with the NATO that would alliance, be difficult though I have him. that would be difficult though I have to say because Five Star and the League have always been saying that we need to have Russia on board because Russia and NATO is something very good for Europe what is not good for Europe is immigrants and the growing ra rise of uh, uh, of Islamists Emiliana let, let's move forward to words what it means for Europe if Salvini wins the snap election, consolidate his gains. What kind of message does he send to Germany in particular and to the EU? Uh, the position of Salvini seems very clear. He's against the EU. He doesn't even participate to, I mean, to the meeting of the European Union. He has a long, long, long experience of a um, politician inside the European arena. And, but he want to break up with Europe. I mean, and Europe seems very worried. In fact, for that, Italy seems to isolate it nowadays from the usual partners. I mean, we are isolated from France. We are the couple of embarrassing moments. I mean, that was led by the Five Star Movement, but then Conte uh, recovered. But Salvini don't want to talk. I mean, while Conte tried several times also to have, I mean, informal meetings, especially in Davos, for instance, with mm -hmm. Angela Merkel, I mean, to recover all the situation. But the message that we're giving to, to Europe is not exceptionally, is not exactly uh, positive. We are out from the trade. We are out from the, me from mm -hmm. the meeting. We were, a, I mean, we were a founder of the European Union. And now there is only France and Germany at the meeting, at uh, the meeting mm -hmm. because Salvini doesn't want to take part of them. Alberto, now, you have many angles which seem to be really interconnected here because we're talking about the League, and the League is part of a wider political movement, which is populism and far right, which is now uh, gaining momentum across Europe. The rise of Salvini, do you see it as the beginning of the end of the EU as we, we've known it for many, many, many years? Well, the uh, Economist magazine some weeks ago defined Mr. Savini the most dangerous man in Europe. I do not agree exactly with this evaluation of danger, but uh, and I don't even think that uh, uh, he, not, he cannot be contained. As we saw with uh, Emmanuel Macron taking power in France, despite a very strong populist movement uh, by uh, Marine Le Pen, and as we're seeing in many other countries, in Germany, for example, the center of European uh, politics is still on two sides, Christian Democrats and Social Democrats. But yes, the, the, the Salvini, if Salvini gets power in Italy, this could definitely reorient maybe part of Italian politics towards Hungary, towards President Orban, and not towards uh, Europe. But I think in the end, Salvini will get some advisors to keep him back on track with Europe. And I don't think that the danger will be so strong, even if he goes, to, if he takes power, because mm -hmm. Italy's democracy is quite strong. We have quite a good checks and balances system. I we see have your solid point. institutions. So Emil I think that it's not so dangerous if he, takes, if he takes power. Uh, Alberto Castelvecchi, Emiliana Di Blasio, I really appreciate your time and your contribution to the programme today. And thank you too for watching. You can see the program again anytime by visiting our website aljazeera.com. For further discussion, go to our Facebook page. That's facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story. You can also join the conversation on Twitter. Our handle is at AJ Inside Story. From me, Hashim, Ahel Bara, and the whole team here in Doha. Bye for now.